So uh, here's a drawing that I made, and I printed off enough copies for what I hope is everybody, but I hope to talk about this at some point. I hope to talk about this at some point. So I'm just going to hand you the box and hope that it makes it to everybody. Fresh off the presses at FedEx Kinko's last night. They did not sponsor this talk. Do, 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 do. Okay, now that we're done with the intro, <laughs> I just figured I should rush through that to get to this. Um, so for about eight and a half years, there's about 90% of what I do, I never culminate into anything. And this is uh, partially intentional because, you know, when I'm thinking about these caverns that are being explored, which no one has ever seen before, and the degrees to which some minerals grow when allowed space and lack of interaction in order to articulate themselves in new and strange ways, that that is beautiful to me and a metaphor that I think about in terms of what's going on inside of me. However, when it does come a time to have like say a nine minute window to present 90% of what you've done for the last eight and a half years, then you have to build some kind of architecture or framework to make that possible. And so I made this door. And this door is actually a door which I have built many times before in totally different ways, sometimes in different media, but it's always a tool for me to express something in relationship to. I think being here today, I'm very uh, interested in processing, programming, and these kinds of things in terms of the way that cognition works. And when I think about uh, what often we're kind of dealing with from a layman's perspective, in some of that is cause and effect. And I just love the idea that I can open the same door over and over and over again and watch it change with the grip of my hand, constantly pulling that lever, watch other people open it and see something completely different behind the door that I can't even see. And Patrick! Patrick! You guys heard that, right? Hi! Hi, Patrick! Oh, hey, it's uh, it's my friend, Wall Friend. Uh, hey, how you doing? Uh, well, I'm kind of in the middle of a presentation right now. Oh, sorry. Well, it's actually kind of cool that you showed up because I think the last time I built this door, it was actually to a project that you were involved in. Oh, is this a uh, Forever House? Uh, yeah, this is actually, well, that was Forever House. This isn't Forever House. Yeah, this didn't look like it. Okay, so at one point I built an interactive maze room and uh, where in which I wrote a fantasy narrative and I played like 13 different characters using puppetry and trapdoors. Oh, are you saying I'm a puppet now? Just listen to me, well, friend, because it's the easiest way for me to communicate it to them, okay? Oh, okay, okay. Okay, so, Wallfriend was one of the characters in that narrative, and um, where he lived inside of this narrative was, it's kind of hard to describe. Well, let me take this one, I think I could describe it better. So, Imagine all the negative space in the architecture that you uh, inhabit, and I live in all of that space. Every place you can't access is where I live. Yes, and because there's only tiny little peepholes, I see some up there. Look, look up there. You can see like tiny little cracks in the architecture. Those are the places that I peek out of to interact with people. So actually, this seems like a lot of people all at once. <sighs> Do you ever get nervous, Patrick? 
I do actually get quite nervous before I talk and I just kind of like sometimes have to do something at the beginning of a talk to kind of get all that energy out, you know? Oh, I totally understand. Oh, I'm kind of getting a little bit nervous right now. Okay, wall friend, what can we do for you? I just need a big flat plane to put my faith against. Okay, uh, the, the floor. What's the floor? The floor, imagine it like a wall that extends across the entire globe and it's different textures all throughout the globe, right? Some are hard, some are soft, it's hard to explain, but I think you'll be fine there. Okay. Uh, so next up, I actually, oh, I keep putting it on and taking it off the thing in a, in a way that isn't really good. Uh, so next up, I actually, dealing with like multiple different processes that seem to be constantly competing for space in your life can make you feel like a lot of different selves. And uh, when I'm struggling to kind of like quell the tension between some of these selves, I need to also build tools so that I can feel the sense of being a singularity. And then sometimes that singularity, I realize, extends into the interconnectedness of everything. Anyways, I brought something today that could, that could kind of help me. It's this tube, and it has a one on it. All right. Origin could be a tube between itself and its ghost. The lack of beginning was a death upon discovery, but was not is. Is is now, but is not beginning again. Distinction is adamant but futile. Sustenance is life suckling backwards from the twin of origin. Lining up the beginning of eminence with its own contour holds the milk of hatred in its light. Only in darkness can destiny escape the pressure of definition. Definition beholden to separation. Separation beholden to the positive image of forms. Positivity beholden to an ignorance of absence. Ignorance beholden to positioning darkness against lightness. Darkness is the heart of nature's whole. Turning all perceived inward, the inversion of knowable distance. Solace only in the light sheds none, for there is no sight in the loving gyre of undoing. All right, so we're gonna talk about that drawing. Do I have like maybe just like two more minutes to talk about the drawing? Okay, cool. Um, so I'm gonna jump from that to the next thing real quick. Uh, one thing that has kind of culminated is in, the, in my process over the last eight and a half years, uh, there's also been another person that I am somewhat responsible, quite responsible for bringing into the world who is my son. A part of my process, which only culminates insofar as it's a constantly evolving thing between he and I, is that I've been shaping multiple narratives in relationship to him, different creation myths that I've come up with myself, or different kind of worlds that I thought of distinct. But within the last about three and a half years, I realized actually through this door that all of these narratives are merging. And that the next time this iterates, what you have on the paper there may be a completely different thing. But what you're looking at is a world that is called the holocomb. 
It is a partial continent that has only been partially explored by a human colony that's tried to settle it twice. They're in their second attempt. And um, there's a circle on the paper. So that is a port town known as Risbonet. And within Risbonet, it kind of is this farming village that was formed because a bunch of uh, indentured servants basically said, like, fuck you to the hierarchical monarch who was basically trying to kind of like stage that as the beginning of the political structure of, of the Holocomb human colony. And yeah, yeah, woo. And so uh, in this world, in Risbonet, there's three different seasons, as we would call them, but ways that they structure time in which different kind of global effects take place that seem like a kind of theater for emotions. And um, there's a time at the end of the third season that's known as Otopotodoki, in which uh, time just stops completely. It stops existing. It takes a rest. That's, what, that's how they conceive of it. They say time goes away. And during this time, all they do is uh, communal gatherings and different rituals for uh, uh, expressing their sense of their place in everything. And now this is particular to Risbonet. And uh, whether or not it's related to the struggle that they faced against the original hierarchy or uh, just out of the kind of way of tilling the land and watch each other build a community together, I don't know. I'm still exploring this place. But uh, I want to sing for you one of the songs they sing in Autopodadoki, and then that'll be it, okay? We are always, we are never, we are the grain, we are weather, we are all, we are none, we are the grass grown green and the steam from the ground and the animals that drink from the streams unfound and the mist of the mountains and the early morning dew and the music in our heart that beats for me and you and when we sing it so it's true we are the sun we are the moon we are further we are soon we are all, we are none. We are mulch under meadows and the pulp and the petals and the flower and the trellis and the bone skin and callus and the tool and the table and the tale, myth and fable and the music in our soul sung for me and you. And when we sing it so it's true, affirm our place in all anew. Thank you. <laughs>